Hi, welcome to another Relax and Paint. Today I'm going to do another butterfly and put a few flowers around it. Just a fun, relaxing opportunity today. Thank you for being on with me. Thank you for um, learning one stroke with me. I'm so thrilled to have you also share my practice strokes. Um, and those are all Fridays. And that's going to help you learn any strokes I'm doing on these Relax and Paints that you might not um, feel like you can see well enough or you want to learn more. So lots of people are binging on practice strokes and I'd love to share that with you. So let's get started and I'm going to use a black art pad. I don't, I try to get the smoothest paper as possible, but remember I've had a few people say, ma'am, can we ever do this on canvas? You can paint anything I'm sharing with you on canvas, but I paint so much. Sometimes I just like to do the subject and you can put on glass, metal, ceramic, canvas, wood, whatever you want. OK, so thank you for this opportunity to um, learn something new today. And I hope it touches you and gives you a great week, continued week, and that um, you will share your art with others. All right. Thank you. So let's go to the overhead camera. Um, I'm going to turn it sideways and I am going to work on just let you know that this is a Carson. All right. And it's nine by 12. We probably won't use that whole size, but I just want to share with you. So if I'm here with my pencil, excuse me, uh, what's going to happen? All right. I'm going to just come up here with, I'm hoping you can see this, yes. Here's the head and I want you to see, usually I do more of a V, but this kind of looks a little bit like a moth to me. All right, so whatever I do over here, I've got to try to repeat this as close as I can over here. Okay, but it's okay because I can keep getting larger if I need to. All right, that looks like a pair of sunglasses. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to curve around here and go to the center. So come over here and curve around here and go to the center. And we're going to put a body in here. And then just bring those wings up to there. All right, so you can see right in here, I want this a little bit bigger. All right, I love mechanical pencils because they already have a white eraser on them. All right. Okay, so I'll then come and do my antennas freehand, but I just want to get my butterfly in place. And then what we're gonna do from here is we're gonna start painting some pretty colors in here that we might want. I'm gonna pull out a three quarter and for some of the flowers we're gonna do. and. Um, I'm going to use kind of both kinds of brushes. And then we have our liner. Um, we just have a few other. We might need a little bit of a smaller brush. That's giving you guys a little bit of time to um, get yours drawn into place. I'm looking for my two. Yeah, there's a two flat. All right, so flat brushes is what you'll see me use a lot. And then what I'm going to do is let's pull out some colors that are kind of springy that go with what we're looking for. I'm going to put a neon orange down. I love neons, <clears throat> makes a really pretty look. I'm using my wicker white multi-surface paint so that you can paint on anything. So floating medium. This is folk art floating medium, and that's what I use instead of water. So make sure that you realize that makes a big difference. All right. So then um, I'm going to get out some bright greens. So here's a lime green, bright, 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 like the orange was. Okay. And then let's pick out um, a yellow. So I have a couple different yellows. I just wanted you to see. 
that one yellow is daffodil and it's really nice and bright. Another yellow I use quite often is a moon yellow. Now you can take this moon yellow by adding white and take it down and down and down to a lighter, brighter color. So I just want you to know whatever yellow you have will work. Oops. All right, you can get all my brushes and all the paints that I'm sharing with you and um, glitters, all kinds of fun items, even the mats that I'm working with and some of the pads. You can get all of that on my website which is one stroke spelled out, uh, dot com. one stroke dot com. I just like to share that because <laughs> it's the most asked question. How do I get your brushes, ma'am? All right, so I am going to put a little bit of magenta. And then I think I'm trying to say some nice springy colors that would look good together. And then maybe, if we put a violet pansy, you could do blue or violet pansy. Pretty bright blue. Or purple. All right. So that's a good way to get started. Now I put it on my plate, but when I am teaching stroke studies, I use um, on my practice stroke class, I use my double loader. So this helps you if you're uncomfortable with loading and you need some help with loading. That's a really good opportunity for you to use that tool. All right. Now it's called my double loader. So I'm going to get some medium. All my brushes, I damp it first, lay it on the paper towel, and then pick up more paint. Okay. And I pick up medium if I think I'm going to need it. And one of the things on this black is that we really want to have some light color. And if I take the chisel of the brush and go along here and let's get a little bit of medium and then pick up some more. I'm going to come right down here and kind of put this white. Oops, I went over a little bit. So whatever I do on one side, I need to do it on the other side, the other wings. Okay. Now I'm just putting a coat of this on here so that when I put just a light bit of color on the white, you're going to get a real pretty look. Okay. So one coat here. So I'm getting bigger and bigger, which I told you is fine as long as you repeat it over here, <laughs> all right? Just because it's got the dark black paper, it will make it pop and look really good, but it also might need some white underneath here and there. Okay, so I'm gonna get more medium and white, and I'm gonna come right along here and hopefully repeat that to the, each side, okay? So let's, let's come out a little bit more this way and a little bit more here. There, and there, is that looking right? Pretty close. Okay, now I'm going to wait to do any more until this dries a little bit and then I'm going to go this is a smaller brush this is my eight you can use a six or an eight and I'm on the chisel doing the body all right so let's go look at a few of the strokes that I want to do on here all right I want to come in here um, with I'm actually going to take this off. Let me show you. It comes right off pretty easy. See that? There you go. And I get that portfolios and I keep all this artwork and um, pages of a portfolio and then I can flip back to it when I'm wanting to see something that or look for something that I have done. And I can draw patterns and work from there if I want to share it with you guys. All right, so 
let's look at this. Um, sorry, gonna get one more color. Let's use some teal. Teal's like a shade of green too, okay? All right, so I'm gonna wipe off the white. I'm gonna go pick up medium and I'm gonna go tap that out so I can get to the edge. They come right in here. All right, see how I'm getting some teal and lime. And then I can pick up a little bit of white, wicker white on one corner and work that in. Let's see the pretty shades I'm getting there. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna kind of freehand some designs I wanna see on here. And one is, I'm gonna stand up and pull a stem on the chisel into there, okay? All right, then we're gonna come right here. Now watch, I put a start here and I go to here. So I push down and stand up to a point. So my brushes are made so that you start on the chisel, okay? I start up on the chisel and pressure and lift to the chisel. Okay, so I'm gonna come over a little bit and maybe have a line coming here, All right? So I'm just putting some more greenery around him. And let's come over here so you can see a little bit better. I'm gonna push and lift, push and lift. I'm gonna pull the stem. Let's pull a little bit of a dark stem. And then, okay, so what I want you to see is as we're stroking this, I'm trying to get out of the way so you can see with the camera, all right? I'm gonna use the chisel edge to come in there, but look, I can come in here and add some pink. You're gonna have all kinds of multiple colors in your leaves. So I'm gonna come right here, push down, and stand up, and pull the stem into it. All right, so look, let's do a little bit of pink over here. And you can tell if I start here and I put pressure and then I stand up, you get the fullness of the leaf and then you get to a tip. And then if you lead with the lighter color, you're gonna have a dark stem inside or the light color there. The beauty of a one-stroke painting if you're not happy with the stroke, I can push and come right back on top with fresh paint and pull the stem right into it and restroke it. Isn't that kind of fun? All right. So let's pick up some more white and work in the teal into the lime green, a little bit of white. All right, now this is a different way to do the leaves. See, some of them I did right next to each other. Some I, I stagger it. Just pick up any color you want, blues and purples or whatever, and add them into the leaf color, okay? So, let me give you just a few minutes to do that. And what I wanna do, is um, wipe some of this out of the brush and let's get some lime green with a little bit of yellow, daffodil yellow, a little bit of white. Okay. Now what I want to show you is just look at the difference when you put um, other color leaves with the leaves that you have. I love using different shades. I love adding those different colors.
Okay, let's put another one here. See how that bright green just makes a whole different look. All right, let's come right in here and just put another one. All right, you can see that I don't have enough paint on there. So I can push again, restroke. So there's no mistakes and then pull the stem in. All right, so when you're pulling the stem in, I want you to see that I'm up on the chisel and I lift the front and just drag the back, All right? Okay, so I'm gonna wash this brush out and I'm going to start a little bit smaller brush. Okay, so this is a 12. And let's start putting a little bit of pink. So I'm gonna pick up some white with floating medium and just slowly pick up magenta on one side, one one edge, right? So what I wanna do is I wanna come here and then come back. So I'm gonna come on this side, just kind of mimic. Whenever I do one side, I come back and do the other side right away because it's easier to keep a balance so that you're getting the same on both sides. All right, and then on this uh, second piece right here, all right, I'm gonna get some more. I'm coming right up here. This is that bottom wing, all right? So I'll put a little bit of pink there, a little bit more pink, a little bit more pink. See, it's very easy if you do each stroke the same as you go. All right, so I'm going to come back out here and do some pink. This is magenta and white. All right. Now I'm going to wipe this and then get some more medium and pick up. Let's just get a little white too still. And get some of the pink melon. All right, so I'm going to come right along here. All right, so I'm going to pick up more white again. Pick up that pink melon so it's fresh when I do it over here. All right, so as you're building, just keep building just like I showed you in the beginning. If you put it on the right or left, you repeat it on the other side. All right, so I'm gonna come right in here and pull Pink Melon up into there. All right. We'll wash that off, we still got the 12. So I'm gonna get some yellow, daffodil yellow with neon orange. Now the neon colors are like a gel, so they don't feel the same way as regular paint feels. I'm gonna add a little bit of white to this. So it's still kind of like orange sickle, orange sickle. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna come across here and across here. And I'm going to come all the way up in here. Okay. Now, this is the feature of the painting, just like I did a butterfly already with you guys. It's kind of a feature. All right. So I'm going to pick up the orange with this neon orange and get a little bit of melon. Neon, neon orange and melon. And I'm gonna just come a little bit around here. 
So I'm making it a little bit bigger than I had thought I was going to do, but that's okay. All right. Now I'm going to wash that brush and get some of the small space in here. This is a little bit of the pink in here. which is already in here. Just even it out on both sides, okay? But I'm going to come in here with some white. And a little bit of white over here. So I touch it and I want two little wiggles kind of. There we go. All right, so let's pick up the orange and yellow again. This is still the number two. See, I'm just filling in those areas and then I stand up a little chisel right here. Okay, when that all dries, I can highlight it. But right now I'm just gonna do this and get some inky. This only time I use water is when I'm using this two script liner, except to wash out my brush, <laughs> by the way. All right, so I didn't show you, I'm sorry. I'm coming over here and making an inky with water. This is a two script liner. Now I'm worried. I'm going to touch that on my paper towel because I'm worried it's going to have a big drop. All right, so one thing I like to do is come one, two, then I can come right here. Oops. Steady my finger. Okay, look, right there. I think this morning, Acts like I have caffeine. <laughs> All right, there. Little detail. All right. I did put two little spots, but I can always touch that with licorice or put a little part of my greenery there. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a couple of these colors with white on this 12, starting with some magenta and white, and maybe even coming over here and touching a little bit of yellow, some yummy colors, okay? So we've got the pink here. I'm actually gonna turn this around so that I can come in here and do my pink. So I'm gonna come around and Keep picking up a little bit of yellow and magenta. Let's get a little bit more right here. There we go. See how I match that color back up? All right. Let's go back again. We've got some white magenta. I'm going to work it in right here. I could put a little bit of pink melon in there if I want. All right, so I'm gonna come right in here. Still needs a little bit more white, I think you can see. Right in here, there we go. Right. A little bit of white and yellow again. Okay, so if you turn around, make sure that you're liking it. 
All right, so the yellow's looking down on here. We have some really pretty yellow petals with pink, magenta in the middle. Not so much white this time. So I keep picking out magenta and daffodil yellow. See, I don't have the good pink in here. So I need to get more magenta. See the difference by going and picking up fresh paint? This one, I lost some of it too. There we go. Now the licorice, I mean the black background, what that does, it saturates it, but when you put the bright on top, it gives you depth also. So it's kind of fun to make that happen. And then I'm going to pick up some more white on um, a little bit of white, still do the magenta and yellow. I'm gonna wipe some of that off. Magenta and yellow again. I picked up too much white, actually. Okay. Okay, let's do it again. Up and down. So one, two, three, and we need five, four, five. Oh, I did six over there. Most flowers have five, so I'm gonna go ahead and do six since I, they do have some that are six, All right? So this is just a fun little project. We put a little bit more detail into the butterfly. I just want y'all to see how quick you can make a beautiful greeting card, a really pretty painting, do any kind of background you want, a really pretty painting, and then give it as a gift or make your greeting card. Think about this on a, uh, a bag or after you wrap it with some uh, butcher paper or white freezer paper and then paint on top of it, makes it really pretty. All right, so I'm going to get some lime uh, green with the handle of my brush. While it's fresh green paint, you can just put one little dot. These kind of are made like a plumeria, kind of. All right, so I'm going to get, uh, let's get another brush here. Okay, so what's going to happen now we're going to pick up some of this violet pansy and work her white. Okay, so All right, so what I want to do with this, I want to come out here and do little teeny petals, which means I need a smaller brush. <laughs> I, I think that you would be happier. That was a 12. I thought I got a 10. So we're going to use, this should be a six. No, this is an eight. That's perfect. So when a 12 or smaller, you're going to load the brush all the darker color or the prominent color. And then I'm just going to side load the white. So every time I need white, I'm going to go back and forth and get it on the edge. And then I just pick up a little bit of white. All right, that'll be way easier for you to make this happen. There we go. And we do five petal flowers. All right, can you see the difference? That was a little awkward. This one was a lot simpler. All right, so I'm going to dip Violet Pansy, stroke white, side load white. All right, so one, two, three, four, five. Now, what I'm trying to show you is, watch this. I touch, I touch and I push down and it, um, excuse me, when I push down, it guides around if I guide it around. 
So pressure, stand up, pressure, stand up. So the pressure gives you the little white edge, all right? And I just keep picking up white edges. Okay. We're gonna have this going off the edge over there. Going off the edge over here. And then I can have some trailing little flowers. There we go. And you just get smaller and smaller as you do that, okay? Now the fun thing about this one is we want a really tiny, um, I got this kiss tool and I shouldn't talk about it so I make sure I have it in front of me. <laughs> okay, I don't. So I'm just going to use a stylist. You can get all of this on my side. All right, so I'm going to pick up the bright yellow and do one little teeny dot in each one of these. So stylist. Tools are fun, but you can always use the sharpened pencil. Okay. You can also come in here and do multiple dots. In between, what I like about dots like this is it looks like back in the background, you got little blossoms popping up from underneath. Isn't that kind of fun? Okay, a little bit over here. Fresh paint, make sure it's not drying out and you wanna see separate little dots, okay? Now, make sure you wipe that off. Now I'm gonna come here and do a couple more of these purple clusters. So I hope you're enjoying this. I have a great membership program. It'd be fun to have you come join me. It's One Stroke Advantage. And if you wanna find out more, you just hit join where it says subscribe. You can also hit join and find out what that's all about. And we just take longer and work on longer projects. So we complete projects together. Each month we have four different lessons. So can you see what I'm doing? My membership's been um, going on the ninth month. I don't know when y'all will be watching this in the future, but you get all the past lessons when you join. So it's kind of exciting. So you can sit and binge one stroke painting, full length lessons. All right, so can you see how, let's, let's look at an overlook of this. All right, I actually think this would be a pretty border. But what I need to do to finish this, this look, is I might come in here with some aquan green again. Um, it's teal and lime green, exactly, with some white. I'm sorry, I got little white, I mean, water spots here. So I can come here. All right, I can have a little vine come in here. And this is with a chisel of the brush or you can use an angle brush. All right, just to finish this little design up, I'm gonna do smaller leaves. Okay, and then I can just do lime green. And let those hang like a different kind of leaf. Okay, I'm gonna come right here with the teal and lime green. Okay. All right. 
See, I split, did a splattering of those. Now it's fun to go to a little bit smaller brush, like the eight, before I put any more purple in. And we are going to um, come right here with the lime green. And I'm gonna come right from here and push and lift little leaves that peek out from this blossom. Right, so this had water in it, so there we are. This one could even overlap the butterfly a little bit, that little leaf. All right, come a little bit here. This is the eight. All right, so then to, isn't that kind of pretty? I'm just getting carried away. I think I'm taking longer than I normally take. But I just think I felt like painting this this morning. And I hope that if you're watching early this morning, that you come back later today if you're not prepared to paint right now. And you join me and paint a fun little garden surprise. This little garden visitor, this butterfly just popped in. See, each size brush gives a whole different look to your painting. Okay. Okay, so now let's take the purple with some white again, violet pansy, wicker white. And then I have these around here. Let's just put for interest, let's just put a couple bigger ones here. I'm still using that eight, but I'm putting a little bit more pressure. Okay, so I'm gonna come right in here. I want you to see you can get bigger and bigger. All right, but go back over here. Let's just have, watch this, just a few of these purple guys. I mean, so violet pansy coming down this little cluster of leaves. That's kind of pretty. Okay, which makes it okay to do it in here too. So I'm tap, 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 and pulling. Okay, we just have one more thing to do. Um, I, I do like to do curly cues, so maybe I'll just do a few of those. I haven't done those for a while. I've been doing other looks. <laughs> okay, so that remember the two script liners, the only thing I use water with, and it's gotta be lighter so it shows. And I'm gonna come here and do some curls. I gotta put enough paint that it doesn't disappear. Okay, so let's put a little bit of a curl. These are tendrils. See, it kind of lightens up and that fades away a little bit, so it's kind of nice. Okay. And see how long that paint lasts? It's because this two script liner is like a fountain pen. It just keeps holding that paint on and on and on. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and sign it while I'm using this. And then we are going to, there we go. We're gonna pick up a teeny bit of white. Your little white touches on our butterfly. Because our last little thing to do is do a little detail along this butterfly. Now I do a lot of fun, simple little touches, but you can spend a long time here and making your butterfly just super detailed, or you can just 
um, depend, it also depends on what you're using it for. If it's going to be a, a beautiful painting that you want to last for a long time, um, hanging in your house, or if you just do a little quick card for somebody, it would determine to how much time that you spend. So um, let me try some of this magenta on here. So I'm going to come right along here. And we need a little bit darker detail. And then make yourself, this one already has some, but it's real important to make yourself do from one side to the other to get the same detail so it looks uniform on the butterfly. Okay. And I keep picking up more of that pink. Now, what happens here is this wing is on top of the underneath rounded wing. So let's, let's go heavier here. There we go. So then I've got to do the same thing over here. All right, heavier here. And it comes all the way back up. All right, you see how that matches? All right, and then right along here, right along here. Oops. So I can every once in a while take some water if I need to and wipe that off the paper, only if you get the right paper. <laughs> okay, my finger ran across wet paint. That's what happened. Okay, so I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow on the magenta. Take that around and here and around there. I do have to put all the yellow dots on the other side, but what I want to do on here is show you just a little bit of detail. I can even use a little bit of purple in there. I just want a really muted line. Okay, so here we go. We're going to come across here and come across here on this side. Sorry. All right, we keep going across here and we're going to come in here. All right. So right here. And all these little lines really add to our detail. So when you're coming across here, then it fans out right here. Remember I said it's easier if you come across here and then duplicate it. Now, some people think that you can take floating medium and um, make inky with floating medium, but you have to only make inky with white. All right. So. All right, I keep going back and getting more of that paint. Little liner work. Right. You see that you're just getting little veins in there. And then I can come in here across here. Put a little bit of yellow. And then I come back sometimes and I put little bits of white. All right. Let me put a little, any place you want to put a little bit of color just adds to your butterfly. Just do it on both sides. All right. So if I come in here and pick up white, I'm going to do a little white dot. So that's thick paint. I did one out here. And then here I just dot, dot. Okay, so then I can do a bigger dot here, a bigger dot here. I can use the other handle of the, the end handle. 
and put our dots there. And, and or you can come in here with licorice and put a lot of detail on the butterfly with licorice, but I just want you to see, we can just have just a brighter detail butterfly with bright colors, okay? So hope that you like this. It's just kind of fun and bright. I'm gonna go ahead and finish my little yellow dots and I will post this picture and I can't wait to see what you guys do. All right, see you next time. Thank you.